everybody to the crossover podcast episode 92 i'm david my constant co-host paul today we have a very special guest with us a man that i've been following on twitter for quite a long period of time now but i think the best intro i can give him is actually off of his own linkedin and this is kevin hit he is an award-winning journalist that began his career at rotowire.com writing notes for dota 2 and counter-strike he then went on to serve as managing editor at wwg editor-in-chief for vp esports and upcomer is now the lead writer for esports at the Sports Business Journal. While at VP Esports, Hit helped grow the site from 35,000 viewers per month to over 5 million in just under a year. And in 2021, he was nominated and won Esports Journalist of the Year at the Esports Awards. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah, absolutely. No, happy to be here. Um, it's been a very interesting ride uh, in esports, um, especially from where I came from, coming from a coaching career and law enforcement career uh, <laughs> to seeing just how interesting the space can be. So, no, I'm happy to be here. And uh, it's been a fun ride thus far. The first question I have to ask you is completely unrelated to esports is that did you see the minute long rally from the Wisconsin volleyball team? Because <laughs> I know you're a big volleyball guy. And that's been oh, everywhere. <laughs> no, absolutely. In fact, I uh, made sure that I sent it. So I'm still coaching. I coach at Mayfair High School here in Lakewood, California. Uh, my daughter is a senior on the team. So I came out of retirement to coach again just uh, until she was done. Um, but yeah, no, I sent that video to the entire team showing them just, you know, grit, heart, fight. It's all possible. And the great thing about women's volleyball is that it's so tactical. Um, it's a it's truly a chess game and anybody can win and so when you have athletes you know such as wisconsin and and what they can do that was just such a neat rally to see i think everybody any sports fan could be excited uh by that clip i've always watched women's volleyball my cousin was actually the number one ranked libero in the state of virginia back in like 2011 2012 ish uh so i don't follow i don't watch it consistently but it's one of those that i always keep tabs on it every now and then and it's interesting That's because you're, you're one of the few people that I know that crosses over into the world of <laughs> traditional sports and volleyball specifically. It's like, huh, I thought you'd be surprised. There's actually a lot of us out there. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think um, M80 Marco, I think his daughter plays volleyball um, on a club <laughs> team, just like mine does. And then you would be amazed at how many like producers at like Fox and ESPN literally played volleyball in college so it's a really small world and there's a lot of volleyball players out there if my daughter huh. is blessed with my height if i can get her into volleyball we are set <laughs> ID one, no problem. <laughs> life is gonna be easy either that or golf if i can get her into golf it's even better even easier. golf golf is the game to play because think about it like this one yeah i mean if you get good at it and you scholarship that's really cool but secondly Think about what all the executives do in their downtime. They go hit golf balls. And if you're a, you know, a woman that can go out there and bang with the dudes and go hit golf balls, you know, 250 yards, you know, even 200 yards, you're going to be in like Flynn showing them that you can ball it up. So, no, I'm teaching my daughter how to play. If you need any advice, I'm a teach I'm a inactive, but uh, technically a PGA A class professional. So more than happy to oh, offer any any oh, advice. We will things. have to talk. Yeah, I need, dude. If you give me a a putter, a seven iron, and a driver, and that's all I had to hit, uh, I'm pretty good. Um, but any other club that's in my hand, stand by and you know actually go right in front of me, like Bagger Vance. You know, I got out of your way by standing right in front of you. Um, that, that's how it would be with me with any other club than the ones I mentioned. <laughs> That's my sister. <laughs> my sister was against playing golf for the longest period of time. And my dad and I would always go out. She would try it every now and then, but always hated it, found it incredibly boring. And then she got into college and somebody asked her to come play golf once. And she's like, well, I've only ever hit a ball, like a ball or two at the range and never actually like go, gone out and played <laughs> consistently. Yeah. She shows up to the course and out drives every single guy in the group. I and they all just it. look at her and are like, I thought you said you didn't play. She's like, I don't find it fun, but I know how to hit a ball and she can drive it like 250. And she's, yeah. she plays yeah. very inconsistently. It's just absurd. No, totally uh, believe it. Totally believe it. So enough about my sports stories. In, into into esports. Uh, monumental day, I would say. One that we've yeah. kind of all known was coming for a long period of time yeah. if you had your finger on the pulse at all. 
what's it been like behind the scenes dealing with the rumors of this, knowing that it was coming when they put out the statement and trying to like verify any information? You know, that's literally the hardest part of my job because I'll get tips um, all the time, right? You know, people are, and, and the reason, you know, there's a couple of reasons why people tell you stuff, right? One, there's an angry group of people that want revenge. So they want to tell you everything, right? So if you can get a hold of the angry folks, they literally will tell you a little bit about everything, right? But then there's some that just think stories are cool and they're like, hey, did you hear about this, right? And, I've known, and I think most folks have known, uh, that TSM and a couple of other teams, they've been trying to sell their LCS team probably for the last year or two, you know, year to six months, right? And then last night in just a general conversation with a source, uh, they talked, they're like, you know, TSM's done, right? They, they sold their team. And I'm like, wait, what? And from that point on, I gathered the details and but could not confirm it with a second source. So I had the story last night. Right. I had it, Mm -hmm. you know, 8 p.m. Pacific time last night. But, you know, I've had a lot of good people teaching me along the way. Don't one source a story. So I actually held on to it. um, And as I was trying to make sure, you know, because I had a pre-write, I believed it. So I had a pre-write up, and then when um, Shopify Rebellion came out and made their announcement, I was able to jump on it so fast because I knew it was coming. And, well, quite frankly, they were the uh, confirming source. Yeah. <laughs> it was fascinating because I, yeah. I was recording a video for something tomorrow, and I opened my phone, and all of a sudden, Travis posts his video about it. Yeah. And seconds later, everything else is coming out about it. It's like, she, like, every. <laughs> I'm surprised with how often things leak in esports. The fact that this was able to to stay so well hidden to the point where there was only maybe a couple minutes delay between yeah. when it was talked about and when they revealed it oh, yeah. is absurd in today's era. Yeah, no, there's a there's been a lot of good secret keeping going on in the past couple months, right? I mean, um, I stand by my phase story um, that I wrote, you know, in terms of the the organizations that were looking to acquire phase um, or merge with them, whichever way they wanted to go. Um, I know those things to be true, but they've done a good job of keeping that story unlocking key. I mean, we've already passed the 19th deadline, right? So th- this particular one doesn't surprise me. Um, I think owners and other people in organizations are being a little bit more careful these days. Um, Because the bottom line is the publishers are exerting uh, more control. And especially in today's market where publishers, because other, you know, esports orgs and tournament organizers aren't doing as much, uh, they realize how much power they have and owners don't want to piss them off. So even, you know, owners and people involved with, you know, those sorts of organizations are now all being quiet. So it makes sense to me that, you know, I was told that, um, that Riot knew. Uh, Riot told a few people, but they did not tell anybody um, who had acquired TSM. Mm. And then it, behind the scenes, do people really care right now about the fact that it was for 10 million? I know that's still a substantial amount, but considering that's just what the buy in price was, is that a big deal to teams that they're basically only going to get back their money? You know, I'm seeing two different camps on that, right? I'm seeing a camp of, oh, they, you know, I think uh, Monte Cristo put out a tweet today saying, you know, look at how much they didn't get, right? And, you know, that's a perfectly valid argument. I'm choosing to come from it a different angle with Shopify. Shopify has deep pockets and those guys have a lot of money and there's no way that they went into this without asking Riot, hey, is the league healthy? Is the league good? Are we going to, you know, are we going to invest this money and then lose our shirt in the next couple of years or is this thing okay? So I have to believe uh, that Shopify did their due diligence before, you know, acquiring TSM slot. And with that, What that means to me is that there are companies still out there that are willing to invest in the space. And as we all cry, winter is coming or or, or whatever it is you want to say, I think this is a great sign for the scene that we have a company with deep pockets that still wants to be a part of esports. And we know, you know, their founder and CEO, I forget is, uh, is it Tobias Lutke or something like that? Um, 
you know, big StarCraft guy, right? Even put up his own money for, um, you know, prize pools in the past and loves the game. I think we're going to see more of those types. I think we're going to see more of, you know, uh, the loot kids out there buying up because what a great time, right? Mark, the prices are down. Why not acquire these guys right now? And then when esports rebounds, kick that off for a three time. So, no, I, I'm looking at it as a great sign that people are still interested in buying esports. So, two camps. So, I have one quick follow-up question on that that I know chat asked, and I had it written down on my list as well, which is, I saw rumors a while ago that the of the $10 million that people paid to buy in, obviously not all of that is due up front. It's due in payments right. over, a course of, over a period of time, but a lot of times sure. there's also a down payment of that required. Sure. Do you know how much the initial, like, was there anything due at initial signing? Because I saw reports of like $5 million and then the rest is due over time. But that wouldn't make sense given the five million spread out over five years, and technically ownership would, you would think, would be almost paid off at this point. But now we know the payments are deferred with interest. Right. Right. Yeah. No. And and that you know, as esports got you know kind of in a bind financially, you know, I looked at Riot, and I mean, as much as they sort of get shit on, I mean, that's sort of a a great gesture, right? To go, hey, we're gonna go ahead and stop the payments, but it will be with interest. Um, so that you guys can be, get back on your feet, yada, yada, all that, right? Um, I, I'm not sure if there was any uh, down payment entry fee. I know that um, from what my sources told me, the transaction actually was completed today. Like the money changing hands and the slot changing hands happened um, not earlier. Like it actually happened in real time as the announcements were coming out. Huh. Wow. That's kind of cool. Not gonna yeah, lie. I because I know a lot of people were gonna look at that and be like, okay, TSM walks out with ten million. Yep. How much of that do they actually make in profit? Now, they this past year they operated assumedly in the positive because they went bare minimum for players, bare minimum for staff, and got two to three million of stipend from the league. So I'm assuming right. they were positive there. Mm -hmm. But people were gonna be wondering like, okay, if they made ten, but they've only paid say five million in equity payments, then Shopify is going to assume the other five. TSM is basically going to pay back the five that they owe there. And then technically, you're at five million of profit barring the loss that the League of Legends entity sustained from 2018 until now. I've never seen Reggie lose a deal, <laughs> to be real honest. Um, I, in fact, you know, I, I, as again, as much as he sort of gets maligned by some of the things that he may do or say, I do think he's a very bright man. Like, I've talked to him on numerous occasions, um, you know, when the when they got sponsored by FTX, I talked to him about that. He, that dude knows his stuff. And so I, I, I have to believe that this deal was a value for value deal where both sides were winners. I don't think anybody got fleeced. I don't think anybody lost. I think both sides made out in this deal. And I, I have to believe that TSM um, made at least a little chunk of change on this. I don't think they took a deficit. Gotcha. So, so nice. taking the teams, taking TSM out of this, taking Shopify out of this, just isolating the $10 million piece there. In 2018, the reason why that valuation is 10 million to 13 million for new teams is because you're investing in a product that you think it's going to develop over time. You're you're paying a certain amount to get in, but a lot of that valuation is based on like the outlook and the for, the future thinking of the league, what you think like basically you're investing sure. in something to come. Speculation. Sure. Now, you have 10 million dollars that you got out of it, but the outlook and the current state of the league are completely opposite to what they were in 2018. How does a ten million dollar valuation now make any sense? Well, if I'm not mistaken, I think teams were going for twenty five to thirty million previously, right? I mean, that's what I was hearing about the slots going, you know, mm -hmm. for very large sums. Um, I mean, that's what people wanted. The golden goose was grabbing a slot and then flipping it. I mean, you know, yeah. that's what people were looking at. Um, I, honestly, again, I will say. I think Shopify, again, they had to have gone, gone into this, having spoken to Riot about the health of the ecosystem. And if Riot's going to convince a big-time company that everything is good and they get in at this uh, you know, $10 million you know, mark, 
I believe, and again, and, and then let's not miss, let's not uh, you know not mention the fact that they also uh, joined with Moist Esports for their Valorant team. Now they so now they have you know a Valorant squad, and now they've got a League of Legends squad. I don't think the Shopify CEO is a dumb man. I think he's very bright. I mean, look what he's done with this company. I think he is seeing a long term investment play that's going to work out. Like that's what I think he's doing. So ten million, I think he thinks he's got a bargain, which was a win, you know, value for value for both properties. Uh, and I, I, I think he, I think he did a good job. I think esports isn't done as much as, you know, as much as people want to kind of shit on the scene and go, oh, you know, esports is past its prime. The VCs are out. Look, we are going to have a period of healing. A period of sort of, you know, reconnecting with fans. And as technology continues to improve, I think esports is just a natural evolution of technology, right? Gaming and VR and AR and esports. I mean, all those things, you can't separate them. And gaming will never go anywhere. It is something that people love. It's covid resistant or COVID proof, as we saw, you know, Fox Sports, ESPN, yeah. when professional sports leagues were on pause or canceled, what did they fill time with? Well, iRacing, Rocket League, uh, Overwatch, they filled those time slots uh, with esports. And so, you know, being resistant to calamities around the world, it is going to take some time because the charlatans have definitely milked the space for a lot of the money, a lot of it's worth. Um, the outside people did a good job of coming in and stealing stuff. Um, but now I think we are on that road to healing and road coming back. Mm -hmm. And I just looked up Shopify's market cap. I don't think he's stressing the 10 <laughs> exactly. million that he's yeah. dropped on the, that could yeah. That slot could go to zero, and I'm pretty sure he'd sit there and go, well, I had fun. Yeah, point. no, exactly. But, yeah, he has a fallback job if he needs to. Yeah. <laughs> and to, and, to respond quickly to somebody in chat, they asked, does Shopify own the company or did they pay to brand it? This, like their whole esports section is within Spotify. Or not Spotify, correct. within Shopify. So it is, it, is Shopify, a, yeah. it is a pillar of the company itself at this point. It's not just branding. It's not like Team Liquid Honda where Honda can pull out and then Team Liquid's still there. Yeah. It's like, no, like this is shopify yeah it's a subsidiary of shopify for sure yep it is a a separate yeah. company and like i said this guy you know again i think his name is lutke um the guy knows his stuff he knows business and he, and here's and, and if you look at the game plan the playbook of even how activision blizzard was in the beginning right when they were starting overwatch and call of duty what did they do they went to freaking the cronkies and the crafts and said if you guys jump in everybody will follow you it always takes the one guy with money to jump in for people to follow because people don't want to risk and until you know warren buffett jumps in and you know says i'm going to buy the stock people stay away from it but as soon as you know somebody with a little bit of uh power and deep pockets um jumps in well, people start to think it's a reasonable bet and that's what i think is happening once again here with the lcs so I'm going to put you on the spot. You Do say it. you're CEO of Shopify League of Legends right now. What okay. what is your game plan to make sure this goes differently than every other investor that has come in that has, you know, drank the riot Kool-Aid of this is going to be the product of the future and they come in and they don't make a wave and in 4 to 5 years they're selling and flipping the asset for little to no gain, or you know, maybe they'll get lucky and the bubble will rebound a little bit. But what's your game plan if you are in charge? Well, see, I want to take that first question, the first part of the question, because I don't think we'll even get to the second part. I don't think it's going to die and we'll have to flip it. Here's the thing. You got to remember, you're talking to a person that um, coached collegiately NC2A Division One, Division II. Uh, I've coached with the women's Olympic team. I've coached... It's all about fandom. That's the difference. And see, Shopify, um, what I would do is I would make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to connect my team to its base. I mean, think about it like this. Let me ask you this, and I'll throw it back at you a little bit. How many teams have gone around 
and challenged high school teams to a show match? How many of them have gone to colleges to go play a show match? How many of them have gone out into the crowd, you know, into the world to create that camaraderie? I mean, Justin Turner, who used to be the third baseman for the Dodgers, who I am friends with, who now plays for the Boston Red Sox, he is a hometown kid. Went to Mayfair High School from Bellflower, California. They could not get enough of that guy. Hometown guy hitting 280 with 28 bombs every year, right? They loved him. I think we have a distinct disconnect in esports on how to create fandom because let me ask you. I mean, you guys know this better than I do. You guys have you're reporting on rosters and who's going where has been exemplary. How many contracts have been signed for more than one year? I would say less than 5% of all the contracts in League of Legends. In the LCS, you know, actually the opposite. We see a lot of contract signing for three to four years out rather than okay, one year. Okay, what about... Okay. Yeah. How about, I mean, I'm just talking esports in general. I, oh, yeah, see, no. yeah. uh, I see teams yeah. turning over all the time. I don't see the same guys. Like people don't believe in team building. They're like, nope, this roster don't work, punt. And to Instead be, of, to be, yeah, go sorry, ahead. sorry to cut you off. That, I, to no, be please. clear, that four year contract is a technicality. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, si sense. they're signing contracts for that period of time. And then the players are immediately removed after one year. So it's, okay, it is so such a false exactly. narrative or like a false disconnect yes. between the two. So thank you for like seriously bringing that up and clarifying that. Because again, as so, I, you know, when I got into esports, I was watching Dota and CSGO. Those are my two games, right? I even created like this Python scraper to create box scores for Dota before uh, uh, Gosu. And then there was this one professor from like North Carolina that had made a website that was just so cool. You know, I made a scraper to create box scores. Uh, you know how hard it was to keeping track of players because they switch teams so often? It's like what we have in esports is a fandom for players, not for teams. You know, I mean, l let's be real honest. I mean, and this may be an extreme example, but wherever Faker goes, it's going to be Faker people. Wherever Faker goes, that team is instantly going to be popular, not because of the team, but because of who Faker is, right? So you've got to learn how to leverage your players a little bit better. you got to bring in and some homegrown talent you know, part of the reason why the London Royal Ravens are not in London is because there were not enough local players to fill, you know, a quality roster that's going to win a world championship. Let's just be real off. If I'm not mistaken, I think they had some players from Korea on that team. And I don't think it, I mean, what UK companies are going to want to, I mean, you got to cater to your home market. And so if I'm Shopify, mm -hmm. that's what I'm all about. I'm catering to my home market. I'm getting all the high school and college kids I can to fall in love with my team. And if you want us to come to your high school and do an esports event where, you know, 1,500 kids are, think about how many times 1,500 or 1,000. I mean, esports in Southern California is blowing up. CIF, which is California Interscholastic Federation, the governing body of sports here in Southern California and, you know, the state. They now have recognized esports. So, I mean, th that's my plan. My plan is to connect Shopify Rebellion with whatever home market I'm going to be in, right? And then I'm going to develop a team. And if we end up losing, you know, I'm not just going to punt the team after one year. I'm going to, you know, get the metrics. I'm going to see if there's some learning that can be done because. As you guys know, and I, I would bet you're better video game players than I am. Uh. I will say though, as a as a coach, as a coach, um, Hugh McCutcheon, who was the head coach of the women's Olympic team when I was working for him, I asked him. I said, Hugh, you know, what's the biggest thing I need to learn? And this is what he told me. He said, Kevin, everybody at this level knows how to play volleyball. The challenge is managing personalities and getting them to go all in the same direction and i think that's very very accurate and relates to esports with these egos um you know they're all been the best they all are catered to um and, and, I, and i don't mean you know that it's super bad but what i'm saying is you need to find people that can take a unit 
in the same direction and be on the same page. And that takes chemistry and you're not going to get that in a single year. You might get lucky, but it's not going to happen. So those are the things that I would do if I was a Shopify CEO to make sure that I can, you know, create that, that target audience so that sponsors want to be a part of what I'm doing because I am ingrained in that home audience. And then I would do the best I could to keep a core group of guys together to create fandom for both of us, not just the players. It's, yep, I mean that's what we've been preaching for. We've been for preaching a while. that for yeah. so goddamn long. <laughs> it's so through. annoying. Yep. <laughs> we we had the L, what blows my yeah. mind. What blows my mind? We had LCS finals in Charlotte, North Carolina, <laughs> in spring. You are yeah. in the home of college basketball, right yep. around the time of college basketball. You have Duke, UNC, NC State, Wake Forest, and that's not even mentioning ECU and the smaller schools all within spitting distance. If every LCS team partnered with a college and just went on campus for a day to just interact with people, do a little tour, maybe do like a show match or just visit a little bit beforehand and then usher people over to Charlotte for the finals, then you start mm -hmm. making connections. Like there's so, uh, I, yeah. Did have... you see the article I wrote last? I, so I wrote an article about two weeks ago on Charlotte, right? Um, within a three and a half hour radius as the crow flies in each direction, there are over a hundred colleges and universities uh, yep. within that range to Charlotte, right? Oh, I went to school and then you've got, Where... oh, very good. So, I'm I mean, very, yeah, you know, High familiar. Point and all those guys. Yep. Yeah. Um, I am telling you, there are so many, and then the sports, um, professional teams that they have a minor league baseball team they have a hockey team they have football team they have uh, you know sp and I, I don't mean to be plugging but sports business journal rated charlotte the number three best city in the country to have a sports team in and so the royal ravens i think crushed it um coming to charlotte they're gonna see you know especially with the esports hub you know that they're doing a, uh and all of the tax breaks and uh, the things that the government is doing over there the incentive program um yeah so that's what i'm saying you, you nailed it like those kind of like charlotte that's a place where you literally could go to all those schools and create a fandom in probably two years that we had jordan sherman who was ceo of immortals at the time on the podcast and they were trying to do something similar with great lakes but yeah i mean the the problem we raised at the time was like you're picking a big area like a really yeah. big area to try and do this it's one of those that i feel i agree with with the the point of getting in front of fans more mm. often you just have yeah. to, i feel like you have to be a lot smarter with how you're going to do that you have to be very sure. selective and make sure you're focusing on the right things and not spreading yourself out too thin trying to do that because then you make no impact sure. at all. That's I've sure. It yeah. blows my mind how we as New York city, we have the, we have the subliners and the NYXL and overwatch, but like yeah. the fact that we have no consistent LCS presence from any right. of the teams in terms of a watch party, in terms of events, CLG brought their team out here once back in 20, uh, I think 2018, like at the beginning of franchising, but that was it. That yeah. was the only time that we ever saw anybody visit the city outside of like finals or worlds coming here. And it's just I, like, I will never understand why we don't do that more. I have my own gripes with the LCS being in LA 24 seven and only getting on the road twice. I would love to go to Call yeah. of Duty style of majors, but I digress I on that point, at least from a fan point of view for brands, exactly. you got to develop a revenue source somewhere. And the yeah. only way and that NYXL you can get that, did a good job of that. Oh, in they the did. beginning, if you remember the MYXL the have yeah. like are my example that I use for everybody of yeah. how quickly you can develop a fandom. If you are consistent with your community exactly. engagement, they crushed it prior to COVID. Yeah, no, I remember going down there, um, you know, for the various Overwatch events and, you know, they had one of the coolest parties. They threw this big party in this like underground bar. I forget what year it was, but that's where I met a lot of you guys. And it, it they did it great. It was classy. Um, it was a mixer. And then they did all these uh, merch drops, right, where they were opening up like in just random spots all over the city. I agree with you. I think NYXL. And again, so why not if I'm, you know, if I'm the, the CEO of Shopify? 
I, and again, I, I bet money he's already done this. I'm sure he has looked at what everybody's doing in order to see what works the best. And I've got two things. One is, and you, you hit it on the head again, if you're everywhere, you're nowhere. You know, you need to make sure that you're focused. You can't be spread out or else, again, if you're everywhere, you're, you're, you're nowhere. And then um, you, you just really need to make sure that you have a plan. You know, and that plan is, and this is what my mentors told me, is he, he said, Kevin, you know, throw out all the bullshit, but find something that works, add your twist and make it better. And I've lived my life by that. Dang. Paul, well, I know I've hogged yeah. all the questions, and... so I want to make sure you get your time. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> I was just saying, along with the points of, like, leadership and mentorship, I just think that right now, that's why TSM was looking to get out of LCS was because I think TSM as a brand is more about pushing really hard and grinding it out and they want to win as much as possible. And it's honestly like competition can at times be, at least from my experience in the military, can be kind of a cold, uh, toxic environment to people because of how hard you push each other. But it can create that diamond sort of winning mentality if you can get there and you can carry each other to there and i just think that tsm's mindset honestly was lpl or lck more based the past few years and it just hasn't been working in lcs well and I first think of all yeah i'm sorry i was gonna say i appreciate your service like again the training oh, that fine. you went through no and i mean that no seriously the training that you go through in the military is very similar to what i went in in the sheriff's academy yeah. um we had a stress academy where you know because it's life and death out there and how do i say this as much as people kind of shit on reginald for his hardcore style no one's ever talked shit about the lovable loser that's not a threat to you that's never won anything they're always your best friend uh, the people that yeah. don't win, it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. Why? Why are all the assholes the ones that win? The ones that do stuff. It's yeah. and the answer is it's because people want to be you, but they want to be you without mm -hmm. doing the hard work. And Reginald's put in the work. So again, yes, has he gone over the line a couple times? I mean, from what I understand, yes. However, I understand his drive to not be mediocre. I mean, again, as somebody that's, you know, I've won a national championship in college at Northern Michigan University. I know what it feels like to lose a national championship in college. We lost, we were up 14-11 in game five and lost 16-14. Yeah, I know what it's like to lose a national championship only to come back next year and win it, right? I know what it's like to get a silver medal in the Olympics as we lost to Brazil in London after winning the first game, like 25-13. And the Brazil said, nope, I'm sorry, we're going to kick your ass now. And they pretty much put it on us, right? And we lost in four. So I've seen both sides of that coin. And I know that, the, you know, coaches, and I'm talking like this, but coaches like Reggie, which is what you are, if you're a CEO, if you're running a team, you're a coach in some capacity, um, he doesn't like mediocrity. And I respect that. And so that's why I think TSM is going to be okay in the long run. Yeah, and Hal, I'd say Imperial Hal is like the definition of TSM's mentality. Yeah. Like the way that dude will just trash talk on stream and like his own teammates even and be like, we got to do this better. I sucked at this. He sucked at that. And if we don't do it better, we lose. It's like what <laughs> yeah. TSM was back in the day with game cribs and stuff like that. It was, hey, step up or we suck and if yes. we suck nobody remembers us yeah if and that's only life. Could, yeah if people could only hear what is said on the field during nfl games <laughs> oh. They, oh yeah yeah no i mean I, I, believe me i've been on the field for an nfl game or two i've heard how they talk to each other and uh, but fans still flock to those games right i mean i literally mm -hmm. so if somebody would say, okay, pay-per-view, twenty twenty five ninety nine for a boom mic to be on the field, they couldn't do that because they'd all get canceled. It would also be yeah, the thanks. most bought product in the history of sports entertainment. Exactly. <laughs> no, you, you are absolutely a thousand percent right, right? So it's like all the esports. Some people don't understand that it's okay to be competitive and it's okay to uh, have some some ribbing, some sports, you know, some gamesmanship, if you will. I mean, look, 
I played volleyball at Northern Michigan University as well. I'm 5'9". Okay, I used to jump pretty high for a little guy. I uh, played outside hitter on that team, number two hitter in the conference. The only reason I say that is not to brag, but because the number one hitter in my conference was Brent Doble from Michigan Tech. Six foot eight Brent Doble, who partnered with Karch Karai in the Atlanta games to win gold medals on the sand. And he would look at me and he would say, oh, I thought the circus courts were in the next gym. You know, as if to, you know, the midget courts are over there, right? And, you know, and he had, back then, he had really bad acne, to which, you know, I'd respond with, have you heard of OxyWash? You know, and we would go, and we would just destroy each other for an entire afternoon, and then we'd go eat together after the game. Exactly, yes. That's and that's awesome. it. And if esports could know, like, guys, this is okay. I mean, we don't need to be talking, you know, in any of the categories that are unsavory and just quite mm-hmm. frankly, you know, off limits, you know, racism, sexism, yada, yada, yada. You know, trash talk is perfectly kind. You know, it's perfectly fine. And I wish people would understand. But again, if they only heard what was happening on fields in the NFL, uh, they would understand. That's a. I think a yeah. lot of gamers don't understand the difference between trash talk and toxicity. Like exactly. they share a lot in common, but yep. it's one of those that like tra- the the best way I can explain it to people is trash talk is you are using everything in your arsenal between yourself and the other person to get an advantage on them. Exactly. That is related to the game or personal yep. without it being, you know as you said, down, like either xenophobic, racist, any, like anything of exactly. that sort is off limits. But like, if you notice yep. that, like, I'm trying to think of a good example that like blurs that line, but it's so hard without being in the moment to just like, know. It, it really is. Yeah. I mean, I'm a midget. I'm short. I'm five foot nine. And he let me know <laughs> that he was going to try to impose his will over me. Right. But guess what? We never lost to Michigan tech. Not one freaking time. But like, Paul, aren't and- you five foot eight? I'm five nine two, so five nine with yeah. two shoes on. I was five ten in the media guide, though. I put Doctor Scholes in but, a couple uh, of those. six four on Tinder. Got it. <laughs> I've seen. I was, I, no, gonna, I've seen you. You're a pretty tall guy. Dave. I was gonna reference what they're saying in chat was a uh, trash talk is fine, but that's not what Reggie's doing. Yeah, we don't support the bad things Reggie did. Like, yeah. Right, abuse. There's a line, right? Like that. Yeah, yeah. Abuse. Or, is, is, there's no. There's a line, and if you go to that yeah. abusive side, then uh, yeah, you need to. Uh, in my opinion, you need. You know, there's steps, right? You need to be admonished, yeah. and then if you you don't change, because, and let's just be real honest, as a coach of 33 years, you know, I, I tell my I tell my players this. It's like you know, when you don't clean your room, your mom and dad come in and yell at you, and then you clean it. But what happens two weeks later? You let your room get dirty again. People rarely change, even in their, you know, as we get older. Um, but yeah, it, 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 for for people to be abusive, there's just no room for it. Zero. Yeah. Yeah, and that what we're more talking about is that like Call of Duty style. What makes North America good at per- first person shooters is that they actually like push really hard. I feel like our first person shooter players grind a lot more. Oh yeah. And that's just yep. kind of how it is. Our culture is different in MOBAs. We're probably never going to make it to well, where Well, we're a Asia gun culture, and, too, right? We yep. like guns here in the true. United States. So gun games true. are something. I mean, I, I swear, even you know, it's back in true. my day, when I, there was a gaming console in every dorm room across the country, or at least in the rec room, right? And Call of Duty was always played. Yep. That was the big college game, and we're we're a, we're a gun society. Whereas a lot of the others aren't. So mo, I mean, like it doesn't it make total sense for places like China, Japan, to love MOBAs because the character development and mm-hmm. all of the anime and all of the cartoons and things that they come. Sorry, if cartoons is a bad word. I don't know, but you know, that's <laughs> fine. I know some people take yeah. it as like it's not a cartoon. Damn it. Um, but you know the character development, like the and I know the off subject a little bit, but Riot Games making Arcane was such a big time move. Oh, that yeah. is just again, you you just cemented you know a new group of fans for your game. So that I mean, right? Cultural differences. In the article, I you know I just uh, interviewed Joe Marsh and uh, Tucker Roberts from Comcast Spectacore Gaming. Right? There's a reason why uh, South Korea is so 
affluent technologically, um, you know, with uh, high speed internet, with you know their PC yep. bunks. It's it. They don't have a lot of space. There aren't thousands of football and baseball fields because they're on a small peninsula, right? So, what is something they could do to compete in and be esports? It just makes so much sense when you look at their culture. You look at when their industrial revolution happened between, you know, 1960 and 99 during the internet era at the end. And in the United States, we have all this sprawling land where we could do football, basketball, baseball, and the fact that they love guns. Gun games make sense, but in other countries, it doesn't. So it just, it's so cool. It's like civilization, esports edition. There were mm-hmm. there were two tweets I saw today that are right in line with that. The first was somebody said it would blow European soccer fans' mind to realize that their highest population stadium would be only the sixth largest college stadium in the United States. <laughs> exactly. and I was like that's like if that yes. doesn't show the difference in like priorities, like soccer is massive over there and it yep. pales in comparison to the local efforts that college sports do. And then the second yeah. thing yeah. was Optic Gaming released their released a podcast with like the the Dynasty crew, like their their top 4 Call of Duty players of all time that were together from like 2015 to 2017. And they talked about the game Infinite Warfare, which was one of the worst public games <laughs> Call of Duty has yeah. ever put out. And the pros couldn't play it casually in pubs. It was it was just unplayable. They couldn't do it. They couldn't grind it. So instead, they created eights lobbies, which were already a thing for Call of Duty yeah. pros. But once they got off scrims, they'd have 40 to 50 people waiting to get in eights and try and yeah. play those games after scrims were done. It basically became like a, a private solo, solo queue, which is what League of Legends tried to do with Champions queue, but it yeah. failed. Mm-hmm. And it just shows the drive difference between exactly. COD pros being put in a shit situation and making the most out of it. And pros will tell you that was the most fun year that they've ever had. And then league pros who are in a similar situation where their solo queue is not great. They don't enjoy it. It's not a fun experience, but they they refuse to take those steps to get to that secondary alternative that COD pros just instinctively did without thinking. Yeah. 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 No, you nailed it. And again, think of, I mean, think about it like this. We have Texas high school stadiums that cost $25 million here. I mean, that's high school stadiums, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So, you no, know, it, it, and so I, and I just, I, I find it fascinating, you know, when, when, you know, for TSM, I mean, look, look what TSM's going to do. Uh, the, I mean, as far as I understand it, their plans are to go get an LPL or an LCK team, right? And it just makes so much sense because what they see here in America with, you know, stick and ball traditional sports, they're going to go do that over there in China and South Korea, and and I think they're going to crush it. I mean, if T1 is any indication of how successful you can be, um, I think it's going to be a good bet. I think, I think Reggie sees that, you know, I mean, uh, you guys know. I've only seen a couple of filled stadiums in my life with esports, like big time, and I, th- I believe it was uh, League of Legends Finals. Um, la- uh, two years ago in San Francisco, I think it was. Uh, last year. Um, yeah. Yeah, last year. That I mean, they sold that out. That was amazing, right? And then in New York, when they had uh, ESL One New York, there was some very big crowds there. But let's be real honest. I everywhere else you're looking at three thousand, five thousand. But then when you look in Poland even, or even Berlin, or or, or you're looking at fifteen to 25,000 people that come to these events, I think that's what Andy's going for. Yep. Even, yeah, even with what, uh, uh, who are they, the French team uh, in K-Core. the lower league in LEC? K-Core. What they're yeah. doing over there oh, is, yeah. I think, what TSM wants to go for. And you can just tell with the fact that they don't want to do road shows, don't want to build grassroot teams yep i don't think lcs even aligns with what tsm wants to do which yeah, doesn't yeah. mean lcs can't succeed it just means that it benefits them both to split yeah they got to find a way to make lcs more relatable again you know i mean yeah. they, they sort of were artificially propped up by all the money right that came in um yep. with everything they have got to remember that it truly is it, i mean guys <laughs> i thought about this a lot 
who are the who who are we marketing to? A bunch of thirteen to nineteen year olds with no disposable income, and so you're wondering why you're not stuff isn't getting purchased. Yeah. So it, it really is a long term play. You've got to get those thirteen to nineteen year olds to remember who you are after college when they have disposable income and they're able to spend money on tickets, jerseys, food at the events, you know, all things like that. So uh, we, we've also got to know our audience and people will say that, right? But they don't say anything. They don't tell you, well, what do we need to know? Well, I'll tell you, we don't want 13 and 19 year olds taking their mom's and dad's credit cards and, you know, spending up bills on skins, right? I mean, yep. that's just not what we want to see. So we, we need to do a better job of making sure, uh, what do you call that? We need to have uh, market retention. We need to yep. keep these people loving the LCS and esports for years to come. I, <laughs> so I remember my sister went to her first Taylor Swift concert for her first ever, like Taylor Swift's first album way back when. Yeah, and yeah. It, my sister was young. She couldn't afford a, a ticket to go there, but it was one of those that when you're marketing to that young audience, you're trying to market it so that you can give parents a convincing reason to buy the tickets for exactly. their kids and take them with, which is why those live experiences are so big. And look at the fruits of that labor. Taylor put in a bunch of yeah. work for that way back when, and now those same fans are now our, our age, and now have their own disposable money and are now spending a thousand dollars to go see her on the Eras tour. And like, it yeah, is yep. just that, that grassroots working it from the ground up that slowly works out over time. And for now, yeah, you gotta, you gotta figure out if you're the LCS, a way to get in front of more people to convince that younger audience to bring their family, bring their friends and like try and try and get them out so that in 10 years, then they can do it on their own. But then they also have more people around yeah. them to also naturally come. Yeah, no, you crushed that. And let me tell you, that's exactly what Evo is doing. So I went to Evo, right? They had a retro arcade. And do you know how many 40 to 50 year olds I saw at Evo bringing their kids in to relive, you know, mom and dad's video game days? A ton, a ton. And so Evo, Evo, they figured some stuff out, man. They're like, okay, how are we going to get people here? Well, if the kid loves Tekken or Street Fighter VI, we know the dad and moms, you know, parents are paying for it. How are we going to entice the video arcade? They had a whole stand-up arcade. They had a whole lot of different things that were associated with both age groups. And it was just so cool to see. Evo knocked it out the park this year. Heard nothing but good things about that event. Yeah. Paul, you got anything you want to go on? Yeah, I'm kind of still... So this is going back to rumor mills, I guess. But I'm sure. wondering, are the other teams, after seeing that... I've already asked about the price tag, but are the other teams still looking to sell with this $10 million price tag? Or are some teams now planning to just wait it out for that next... I don't know what to call it in games, so I'm going to call it bull run, basically, and wait for that $20 million, $30 million price tag to come back? You know, I, I don't think people are going to wait. I still think there's a couple teams that want out, right? I think there's a couple teams that still want to sell. Um, okay. You know, for, you know, I mean, again, the, the rumor mill was like 100 Thieves were shopping. That's what I was hearing. And a couple of other teams, right? Um, they could have changed their mind, right? They could say, no, we're good now. I mean, and again, I think it all depends on what message uh, Riot is sending to the teams. Um, I mean, maybe Shopify coming in kind of solidifies the league, and they're like, okay, well, if this guy, again, when the guys with money come in and they feel like it's stable, um, uh, but I, look, I think anybody can, any team can be bought, any slot can be bought. Right. So I do think that if the price is right, I, I would not be surprised. Like if I went to one of the you know three teams, I think are kind of shopping in the LCS and I came to them with a 15 or 20 million dollar ask or, or, you know, offer, uh, I think they'd take it. Yeah, it's still in that conversation, because I know John Robinson put 
he came out and said that you know it's normal for us to put our assets on the market to see what the valuation yeah, is. Exactly. Yeah. No. And I think there's more okay. than one team that has done that, right? I mean, what a what a great cover that you can say when you're shopping your team. And I do think there's there's about two or three that are that are in the same boat that would like to tell you, no, this is just a you know a natural evolution of doing business in esports. <laughs> no, I do. I you know I I think there's a couple teams that want out because um of the you know salaries and the costs and it's much easier to get into Fortnite and rocket league and some of these other games it's it's cost effective right so i think that's what people are you know these teams are looking to do is be more cost effective until that time they see that you know these franchise leagues are going to make them a little bit of money sort of like uh I believe it was the Morgan Stanley report that Al had that said, you know, you're going to make 700. We're going to we're going to have 700 million in revenue by year five. And these teams were all waiting for that. I think it was close to that number. So I, if I'm mistaken, I'm sorry, but I do think it was close to 700 million in revenue in year five. Yeah. And we know that's not happening. So, I, I you know, it's it's all about the message that Wright is sending to the teams and uh, if they believe it. I need somebody yeah. to just sell their spot to Optic, please. I beg. <laughs> I beg. I, 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 will, yeah. I will donate I, the three dollars that I have setting aside. Yeah, I think Optic Gaming is a, an organization that really does a good job of engaging with their audience, and they travel well, right? Uh, in Vegas, even, even when they weren't playing, they were still cheering. Let's go Optic! Um, I, I, I'm all about it. If, if Optic wants to be in any of these leagues, but I do think, from what I understood, was uh, they were a little more than butt hurt when they didn't get in Valorant. To be fair, that was their own fault. And I'm glad Hex owned up no. to that publicly since then. Yeah, but what did he say? I didn't hear. How, he I mean, basically. So what I heard was that somebody messed up the application really bad, <laughs> like really, really bad. And they didn't take it. They, they, I don't know if they didn't take it seriously or they assumed that they were in, or if they just misunderstood the assignment, whatever, whatever it might've been, but they, there were rumors of that for a while. And then hex came out on a podcast and basically admitted that. Yeah, we, no, he's we, telling messed you the up. Truth. we messed up the first application. We've got in yeah. riots, bad suit. We tried to fix it. But it was too late by that point. And yeah. I... no, he's telling the truth. I can tell you, <laughs> I, 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 I can't say because I swore I wouldn't. But I know why. I know what happened in the interview, and uh, it's just. <laughs> uh, let's just put it this way: some egos got in the way of some things, and it just went south. Well, if there is a company that likes to never mind i won't say that about riot but because tsm still is gonna have a league of legends team someday but yeah yeah <laughs> i don't I would have heard of them, but yeah i have like i do think that at least some of the teams coming in are giving me hope for lcs if they can yeah. just change that time slot boy would that save it because it's terrible oh, trying to watch this on a weekday yeah, yeah. No, I look, if Optic were to ever get into LCS, I'd be very happy. I, I Again, I love their fan base, and I love how they travel, and I don't think that'd be... I'd love to see Optic against NRG. What a cool match Oh, that you and be. me both. <laughs> you, uh, the amount... I would get myself in trouble, because Andy yeah, is one of, the, one of the few people yeah. that follows me on Twitter, and I see him occasionally liking stuff whenever I'm talking about LCS. He is not going to appreciate how obnoxious I'm oh, going to yeah. get over that rivalry. <laughs> you have, yeah. like, he's not ready in the same way that LCS and TSM fans are not ready. <laughs> if we ever face each other at Worlds, it's going yeah. to be a bloodbath. Oh, it for, is, sure. for the, sure. That will, it doesn't matter who it is. Like, we just need, if TSM ever goes to Worlds and say yeah. C9's on the other side, I just need oh, yeah. Blabber to stand up and <clears throat> flick him off just yeah. once. Yeah. It will start, <laughs> it will continue the rivalry until the end of time. Yeah. Until yeah. we crush you with five Chinese players. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what I love about Andy so much? I mean, I'm being, being dead serious here. Andy's a real businessman. You know, he's not one of these guys that, I mean, come on. How many people, how many organizations did you see that literally gave 
23, 24 year olds millions of millions of dollars and said, yeah. go make us an esports or who have no business acumen or business experience. I mean, I think we could probably look back and go, what were you doing? Andy, um, he's the real deal. He, you know, he has rubbed shoulders and made deals with some of the, you know, largest companies, uh, in North America. And he made his money doing those things. I mean, at one point he was what a uh, minority owner of the Sacramento Kings. I think he made a lot of money in the wireless industry. Like, no, that, worked that under, dude knows directly his stuff. under Steve jobs for, I believe it, yeah. uh, three or four years. That's yeah. So I, it, when Andy speaks, he's somebody that I listen to. Uh, to answer somebody from chat, they asked, is it known why uh, Andy is mad at Hex? So I talked to Andy at LCS <laughs> yes. Finals. Uh, <laughs> it's known. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say Andy's necessarily like pissed at Hex, but there is a little bit of bad blood, you can tell. And that's, look, Hex got the chance to buy back his brand and fully own it. And if you put yourself in the, in those shoes, and it's a you know basically it's a your child that you've raised from the time you quit your full time job, I understand why Hex made the move, but at the same time you had a really big partner with Andy, and if those two brands would have stayed together, they could have been something go, like it could have been easily the most popular org in all of esports in my mind if they actually kept their resources together. But yeah. It, I, I wish I could share more with you, but there is, there is more. There is a lot more to it, um, in, in some of the internal dealings and things that happened with, um, let's see, employees and players, yada yada yada. But I would say this: Andy's not a guy that really, in my opinion, from what I know about him, he's not a guy that really sweats it. He, he he's over it, right? He's focused on his stuff. Um, you know, he, is he irritated? Maybe, but at the same time, I think he really just is focusing on his business and his stuff. And, you know, at the best skill that, you know, that my players have sometime is just dismissing things out of hand and forgetting and just letting things go. Like, you know, if you have a bad play, you just let it go. And I think that's what Andy's doing right now. Just letting it go. But yeah, I think there would be. Uh, there might be some flames still be able to stoke into a fire if uh, there was an NRG optic, you know, LCS match. I think that would just be cool. Yeah, an NRG just winning a title. I'm sure Andy's chilling. Oh, oh yeah, Andy. No, is, Andy is being chilling. Yeah. He is fine. <laughs> yeah. He's living yeah. life to the fullest. He's like, shit. It took y'all how many years to win one? Yep. Yeah, I mean, he got one in Overwatch, right, with the shock. Yep. He's got one here. Yeah. Like like I said, just pay attention to this guy. He knows what he's doing. I was trying to yep. work it out the other day, but I didn't fully figure it out. So they had they had, they didn't get it in Smite, but they bought the World Championship team there. They obviously won in Overwatch. I know they won a Rocket League World title. They won That's where I met Andy with Smite Championships in Atlanta that year. That's where I met him first time. Dang. Yep. But yeah, they've won in almost every title that they had. They never won a title with the Chicago Huntsmen when they were in Call of Duty. So that's like the one yep. game that I could think that they didn't do any, or they did, they weren't able to pull it off. They're still in Valorant yep. and haven't won any, haven't won it all there yet. But they Don't they've been past them. Ex, they've been very successful at developing systems mm -hmm. that breed championships, whether that's via well, he, recruiting yeah. or young players, like what, whatever. Well, he knows he business doing. and he knows sports, right? I mean, again, yeah. when you're the minority owner of an NBA team, I'm sure you're well-versed in what's happening with the team. You know, you're not just hands off. You're probably seeing how they're coaching, how they're developing, what works, what doesn't, right? I think he brings so much more knowledge than just from the business standpoint. I think he knows how to coach people in general so yeah no i think you hit on the head there too i think uh uh nrg's got a, a bright future and he knows how to spend his money wisely con mm -hmm. had a great question in chat that i i want to ask you uh he said if other lcs teams were to get sold and obviously you mentioned that some are looking in terms of the orgs that are at least in the rumor mill to possibly be interested i know you wouldn't be able to give specific names but are we looking more in line with the likes of shopify or are we more looking in the likes of somebody like sentinels or some of these legacy brands that are finally trying to get in no i think we're seeing more companies like shopify um 
and, and again, you know, uh, through my experiences with uh, SBJ and at different conferences, you know how it usually happens is that a CEO's got like a daughter or a son that loves video games, and they're like, yeah, I really like this, and they're like, well, why don't we start a team? What the hell? Let's see what happens. And you know, I mean, how many sons and daughters have you seen from major sports teams? that were named president of, you know, their esports organizations. You know, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Cronkies, I think is Stan, right? Or, yeah. or the Stan's the dad, I think. But um, the Cronkies, uh, the McCourts, uh, Vegas, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Roberts. Um, no, I think it's companies more Fox. like that. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. So, no, I think it's companies more like that that are, that are looking – Again, smart business people buying low, selling high, and this is this is very similar to the real estate bubble in two thousand and eight, um, where people it, it burst, and those people that saved their money were able to grab real estate at cheap prices. I think that's what's happening now. To address a comment that somebody had, or a worry that somebody had, chat, they're like, "Do we think do we think Shopify will try and be a self sustaining org?" It, to them, it seems so far like they're just an org that's a marketing exercise uh, for the company. The, the response I would have to that is, what do you think this entire industry is? How do you think we make money? And that is yeah. by being marketing vessels for whatever companies want to come in and give money. That's every sport. That's every entertainment product anywhere. Like, sure, you're there because you want to make an artistic and entertaining product for movies or for television or sports. You obviously want to see the best football player. But none of that is possible without us being effective marketers at selling people a product and not just watching football, but like Papa John's, for example, or Pizza Hut. There's a reason why the, the official food delivery sponsor of the NFL is such a sought after deal, because you know you're going to get business because of that. And the only way that there... LCS stays, in, stays intact as a product is if eventually we can start selling stuff that sponsors are coming in to pitch us. Yeah. I mean, is there any better partner? I mean, Shopify is an online commerce uh, business that allows people to buy stuff. I mean, imagine, yeah. if you will, they have their own, you know, Shopify Rebellion website. Uh, they don't have to take uh, a cut of their own sales there. They literally can use their own platform. I mean, there's so many bonuses to running teams like this and, partnering with leagues to i mean I, I could totally see a world in which uh tobias um the ceo he's looking at different leagues wanting to become you know the official you know online e-commerce of of leagues I, I mean it just it just seems brilliant for shopify to get into the space for a lot of reasons such as that so yeah no i i think this is an investment not only in esports but yeah this is brand advertising so people will know what they do yeah, next we need the Amazon Amazonians <laughs> to buy a slot. <laughs> next we'll have one and two... over only, please. We only <laughs> yeah. will sign tall people. <laughs> yeah, and it's just the most dominant, like, it's every time there's a rivalry, it's just the two e-shopping games, and yeah. that's it. Just super hyped up. I would yeah, love to no. go on Shopify and just see anti Amazon League of Legends slander posted <laughs> on a website somewhere. Like, all all the reviews are anti, you know, their LCS team. Everybody yeah. starts bo review bombing. Yeah. You start seeing logo Yeah, just random items board. are getting bombed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that'd be fun. Just go and search and read that. That'd be good. You got anything else you want to ask Paul? I know we're at an hour, so I don't want to take up any more of your time, Kevin. If I don't, if uh, no, I appreciate. It. Yeah, I've got some, got some items due. I'm still got a little late on that. I got to turn in. Uh, Esports newsletter comes out tomorrow, so I got to write a couple things. You know about the things of today. Nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it wasn't a small day for esports. <laughs> it's a good day for esports. I'm glad. I mean, you oh know, yeah, big news day. It, it puts it out there in front of everybody, and we had somebody that wanted to buy in to be in the LCS. Uh, uh, what a good day! I'm very happy. That's good. I can't wait for tomorrow. There, I will say this: every if you're a League of Legends fan, keep your eyes on Twitter at yes. one o'clock. Uh, 
there's an announcement coming out. I can't speak on it. Embargo currently. Uh, but just keep your eyes out. I haven't seen it teased anywhere, but I just want to build up the hype for, you know, like the seven people that are here chilling. Exciting. <laughs> but, well, thank you so much for coming on, Kevin. I really appreciate it. I think Paul and I might sit yeah. here and just catch up on some some life and BS for a little bit, but I want to uh, you know, set you free. Don't want to shackle you down here. Yeah, no, I appreciate the invitation. I appreciate the time. I had a lot of fun and I uh, hope to talk to you guys again real soon. Yeah, thank Hopefully you. We will. Thank you so, so much. All right, take care, boys. Bye. See ya. Paul, I'll keep the podcast off for us just for a little bit. Figured we could chat a little bit about mm-hmm. like non business stuff, but wanted to reflect really quick what you Did... thought. Um, oh, about having him on? Yeah, just quick. Thoughts. I mean, that was pretty big. That was pretty cool. Like, he has. He had a lot of cool knowledge, I'd say, and the second he said sheriff or ex like police, I was like, okay, him and I are about to gel I, like so hard. I was like, oh man, him and Paul are pretty much two peas in a pod. Yep, I was like, him and I are about to fully agree. Just be tougher every time. <laughs> like you talk about something toxic, we're gonna be like, have you tried just? being tough no, it's like obviously that's not what we're saying yeah like that's a joke but that's like i was like yeah he totally is gonna be in my boat of like i do not think that lcs was the environment for tsm to continue succeeding in and when this came out i was honestly like i woke up and read it and i mean i didn't really feel a ton because i've yeah, already no, gotten yeah. over this yeah but I was like, you didn't spoil it for me, which was nice. I got to go find it on my own, figure it out, and read about it. And I think it's going to be uh, pretty good for LCS and TSM. I was kind of worried at first because I was like, who the heck? Yeah, I, when I first saw it, I was like, Fiber uh, belly. what? <laughs> but he said a lot of good things about like putting into perspective the CEO that Shopify has. And him bringing that up, not really something that you or I, I think, were, like, really going in and looking into. No, I mean, I was trying to look a little bit, but I could, like, when when you're looking at it with brand new eyes, you don't know who, where to look, who to trust. Like, you can do a little bit of Google search, but, like, that's why I was really happy when he agreed to come on. It's like, he knows more about them and about the industry and about, like, everything else going on than you or I will. And it'll be really good perspective. Yeah. Because at first I was like, I don't know who these losers are. Like, I'm not going to cheer for them. They took TSM slot. But now I'm actually kind of like looking into them and going, ah, I could I could sit here and wait for a rebuild or see what they're doing. It'll really depend on rosters. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm a free agent, so I can wait and see who's the best and just pick a team. Everyone else is a loser. No, <laughs> but I can, I can wait to see if they pick two Korean imports who are going to be dogs and then go, yeah, I might take that team. I might mosey on down to their team. <laughs> I just like the culture. <laughs> and then oh, watch. <laughs> but it was it was nice. And the way he was, I'm not going to lie, he was kind of getting me motivated. The way he was like, Andy's going to go somewhere and he's going to be a dog. And I was like, yeah, he is. Like, I could feel his Olympic-level coaching buying me into the culture. <laughs> Look, I have heard this from more employers than I can count, where everybody says, if you've ever played a college sport, that there's just a level of teamwork, communication, and understanding that just everybody else does mm-hmm. not have. And yep. every time I talk to somebody that has played a college sport, I'm reminded of exactly that. Of just, like... it. It just feels like people uh, people have a different level of understanding yep. that if you haven't been there and you haven't done it, you don't know. <laughs> yep. It's very true. I think it's like, and it's a lot different than I'd say like the communication that I'm used to because military communication is built on like controlled chaos. Like everyone's just cussing each other out, screaming as loud as they can. But then afterwards, you go sit somewhere, eat together, and make up. That's the point. But in the moment, you're all just out of your minds mad, and everyone's shit-talking each other. <laughs> but college like, seems to be more of like, 
hey, there's going to be bad moments, there's going to be good moments, but ultimately it's a bit more, I'd say, there probably is some more professionalism, even though they're younger people. you got to remember, military is all young people who are not educated, so we're all idiots. And they're actually educated, top of their skill, like top 1% of whatever sport they are, and just animals, so you're going to get some of the best of the best. He brought a lot of faith back for me after that like that conversation just in general i did like oh I, yeah i feel like i've heard so much oh, yeah like doomer take and i've had people again i'm not gonna name who but I've, I've had people that are in the lcs scene like basically you know in dm say hey you know we talk a little bit and they're like the league's dying and i was like mm-hmm. thanks exactly yeah. what i wanted to hear is i'm trying to build this shit up and they're like move on to different shit and it's like to he- to hear that perspective come in and even though he he obviously isn't in the day-to-day of the lcs so like the people that are involved day-to-day like have more exposure to the problems yep it was nice to hear it really was i i and i do think a lot of that helped with the fact he's a dad so i'm gonna use this to reference it but his he said his daughter's a senior or whatever playing volleyball so he's been through 2008 or at least he was around our age or older during 2008 so i think he's seen bad he has seen really bad for places and it does give you hope knowing that he looks at this and goes hey it stinks it looks rough but the people buying it up are way smarter than any of us talking they have way more money and if a guy who's worth four and a half billion is buying into something it's usually because they make pretty good decisions. Yeah. Are there a lot of failures with rich people? Yes, they're going to keep trying everything and see if it's because they yeah. only need a couple things to hit. They have more flexibility but, to, they have more risk tolerance. Yeah. But he definitely, like, you can tell the Shopify CEO thinks it's worth it. And the fact he even thinks LCS is worth it gives you some hope. And he sees it more importantly to me as worth it to buy as an advertisement. Because yeah. he left the Shopify name on there with the Rebellion. So that tells me he thinks this is an investment in advertisement. Which, if you ask me, <laughs> I would I don't know what he's seeing, to be honest. Because I just watched Last Split, and it was about as bad as it get as an advertisement. But hey, he sees it as worth it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But I do think if we ever meet LCS, we're going to crush y'all. When we have our five Asians, I didn't want to say that with him on here because I don't know how into the seat he is and how much he'd understand me say this. But when we bring five Asians and spank y'all, Americans, it ain't gonna be fun. Just get ready for that. We're about to be typing MNS type stuff in the chat, buddy. Go home. <laughs> Better swim your way back. <laughs> Enjoy I... the fifty states because it's all you got. We're going to spank you. <laughs> I look forward to this rivalry, and I look forward to watching LPL more consistently now just because TSM might be in there. Oh, yeah, we're probably going to suck. <laughs> You're going to be so bad when you go at first. Oh, yeah. Like, I know I'm saying all this, but it's clearly a joke. <laughs> LCK or LPL, there's already very established good players. And there's no way we're buying any of them. <laughs> You're gonna bring insanity with you. Yeah. No, they. No, I that, could see dope. TSM go into LPL, and actually try and so. There's a lot of like rumors and jokes about Doom B and other dudes, uh, wanting to rejoin together, like, as an old version, just a veteran team. Yeah. I could see that being TSM strategy, like I... season one. Go yeah. the popularity route to start, and then yep. from there, like basically do that, and then build up like an academy network underneath you, and then like whenever those guys, yeah. like, you give them their year, and then you bump up the academy guys, and then you're already used to bad results. You're already tenth, but now you're tenth with new guys, and then you can start building from there. Or nineteenth in the LPL's case. Yep. Yep. And I, yeah, I don't see a world where we like. I don't know, we we just go full rookies budget again because I think Reggie's been saving money so he can do something cool from what it's looked like. And we just 
bought a uh, CSGO team, which I was really worried about because they said they were going to buy one. They said it was flopping. Then it turned out it wasn't flopping. There's just the guy who they were going to pay to be in charge of it. Like They didn't really understand his vision or agree with him, so they just got rid of him in typical TSM fashion. <laughs> and then they actually made a Valor or a CSGO team. So I was like, okay, we're safe. We're safe. I thought we were falling apart. And uh, TSM just won Apex Worlds. So there's that too. That would be funny if TSM partnered with LNG and just bought out like a good roster and good development system. Already. If we bought Gala, you will not hear me shut up. I will be the loudest, most annoying human being you will all ever find. I will be speaking so much about everything. If we actually come with a good team, can you imagine how annoying it would be for North American League of Legends fans? If we were at MSI, like if we were a top two Chinese team at MSI, went there and spanked LCS. And that's the important part. If we lose to LCS, it'll all be for naught. I don't know. Like, we'll see. if we beat LCS, I would die laughing. But I am worried. How much does Griffin leaving worry you? Uh, not a ton. Because I don't think many kids, really? many not many kids nowadays are going to have the financial resources and the drive to leave their entire fucking country to go over there. Fair like, enough. It's going to be a very special case. It's going to be the prodigy talents, but I don't think you're going to see many people like leave our ecosystem as a whole. I think ultimately, I like Carlos, the guy that's now head of LOL Esports Americas. I think. <laughs> The, the bits that I've seen of him talking more casually and like not just thrusted into a PR situation. I like the mm -hmm. way he thinks he very much has that. Like we have to get in front of the fans mentality that we were just talking about that. I like yep. now. I don't know how he's going to get there. We'll see, but I have faith that things will eventually start to turn on. I don't know if we'll ever be able to close that gap with Korea and China, like he mentioned in the interview and how Riot apparently is taking a look at that and trying to figure out how you can bridge it because it's apparently not good for China or Korea that nobody else is competitive. But I don't have an answer for you on that one. I, I don't fucking know there. But... Yeah. I'm... Because we're still so far away from Worlds, dude. It's kind of insane. It fucking <laughs> sucks, bro. It's terrible because I don't know how to watch the Asia games. I don't it's understand not where. It's not like I, and no. I don't give a fuck. I I just want to get to Worlds already. It is driving me up a goddamn wall that we are still. Oh yeah. Well, got something for you. Okay. Drew Dutes tournament. Have you seen that at all? No. You should check it out. Drudu is hosting a tournament that is doing Fearless Draft, and it has tons of EU West one tricks in it. Like, he just built teams with EU West one tricks and some not one tricks, but it has, like, Dantes in it, uh, Duanel. Yep. He's in the tournament. Uh, there's a team that's just Germans, and they call them the Germans. And then there's, like, there's teams that are just country-based as well. That's great. And they just call them by their country, and it's awesome. And there's tons of really talented one-tricks in it, like, who eventually they just quit banning their one-tricks. So every series, there's one game where the one-trick gets it, and, like, it's a huge deal. Because you can't pick the champ again. So there was one game where Kesha's playing in it, uh, the US guy, the Nunu main, he's playing in it, and he picked Hecarim, and Doanel picked Nunu, and those are both their one tricks, and they both just played each other's one trick and sucked the whole game, basically, <laughs> in the scrims. And it's been pretty good. Fearless like, if people want really something to enjoy. Be the way forward. I really do. Oh, with the amount of champs in League of Legends, I think it matters a lot, because I I will say, like, the amount it adds... So, competitively, right, there's arguments to be made. You want to see people on whatever. You want to see them on their best champs. Who cares? But the amount it adds to the game... Like, when Boss gets uh, Scion, 
it is so hype because there's a streamer team and the streamer team is reptile the boss doanel and uh yamato yamato's death so it's people like that it's eu us streamers and then dantes and their team like when one of them gets their main it's so hype it's so funny it's really fun if they lose the game it's hilarious because they all have player cams on so you're just laughing at them losing with their player cams and druid it's really like got it down pretty well it's funny i don't know i i think that would be good for people who are at least like they need the itch i'm not saying it's great league of legends there's a lot of mistakes made but they're all challenger level players playing for a winner take all prize pool so dang it's pretty funny might need to check it out might need something to cope me if but the t- people keep fucking talking about 100 thieves leaving the lcs and i keep getting more scared even though we signed sniper bro he's just he's just putting al- assets out there i liked how even he was like yeah i mean if you're putting the assets out there <laughs> that means you're willing to part with yeah. them <laughs> I was like, that's uh, like me saying i'm selling my uh i'm selling a stock like that'd be like saying hey i'm selling my tesla here but uh i'm just putting the assets out there so i can buy back later <laughs> like yeah i'm getting rid of it so i can buy it later <laughs> or i'm just done with it entirely like you don't sell something or put something out to see how it's doing <laughs> like the old uh what a, no a better analogy would have been a garage sale. Yep. Be like but, putting all your stuff in the lawn and saying garage sale just to see, just seeing how it go. <laughs> I just want everybody that's going to sell within the next year because I don't think the market's going to change all that much from where it's at right now for the LCS. Get your ten million and get out, and like cycle through now so we can try and like all these orgs that can come in. I just want everybody to come in now so we can have 2024 Mm -hmm. as like our playground, our test area where people can figure their shit out because I still think 2025 is just going to be so massive for the game, for everything else that you got. Like the LCS needs to lay their footwork. They need to have everything prepped so that in 2025, Mm -hmm. when Arcane comes out, when you see this massive resurrection to a certain extent of the game and these big payoffs that they're apparently betting on, like, you need to be there to take advantage of it fully and just everybody that wants out get out even if that's 100 thieves and it fucking sucks for me like sure just fucking do it already and get it done rip the band-aid off don't make this take any longer than it needs to let us get our pieces in place that we need to grow and hopefully we can stop changing team ownership so goddamn much yep and it's I think it's gonna be really important that or at least I hope that the new owners look at what NRG just did and they all kind of live by that uh it would be the EUS mentality and I know it's a mentality that LCS fans hate, but listen people, we gotta get competitive. We gotta get competitive internationally a little bit. So it's gonna have to be this mentality, but switching players out will not kill you. Living with some of them for a while to see where they go is great. NRG did that. They let their players grow. For I guess CLG really did the heavy lifting on that. Yeah. But NRG went and watched. They saw, they evaluated their roster, said who's worth waiting through and who's not, and they replaced their bottom lane. Which CLG had that bottom lane for a full, wasn't it a split or full year, three think. splits, right? I think so, yeah. It was yeah, Poom, full Poom, year. Poom and Luger that they got from 100 Thieves. Yep, and that was that's a hard decision to get rid of people, but realizing where you can get better is huge. And I hope all these teams do that, because NA has a talent pool somewhere. We just need to start seeing it being used. Like we, I want to see new players, and if they fail, so what? At just this point, them, I want to see something part new. Is give them time. Like the thing with Luger and Poom is like yep. they had a year and a half on this roster. Where it was like, okay, we could give concrete proof that like this is a problem and we're going to swap it out. What you can't do is swap out the majority of your roster and change your identity every year. 
Mm-hmm. Like the thing that made the CLG yep. like core stick together is like you had Palafox, you had Doko, you had Contract, and you were trying to put these pieces with them to make it work. But those core three stayed the same. You could make changes. Nobody's asking you to keep your roster exactly the same for such a long period of time, but like you need to keep it majority together. It's what's mm-hmm. made Cloud Nine for some people watchable right now is because you've had Blabber, Fudge, Zven for a long period of time and now you have berserker who's been there for a while but apparently according to arsh's thing that might be suspect what what was he stiff for arsh let me look up arsh's uh arsh put out his like rumor like what he's been hearing etc uh and it was like uh I think it was just Ven and Fudge, if I'm not mistaken, but let me just scroll down just to make sure. Wait, are they planning to leave? Uh, so he has like 90% chance of staying, 50% chance of staying, less than 10% chance of staying, and depends on worlds. Uh, Berserker was 50% chance. He thinks m is gone, and Fudge and Sven completely depend on worlds. Huh. Which, to be fair... I'm not going to lie. I think that's ultimately fine for C9. They've been together for two years now, more or less. Like, you've changed out the, the mid laner. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, Fudge, Zven, <coughs> Berserker, Blabber have been there the entire time. Wait, what's uh, that? My powers. Oh, that's good. Okay. Duck. My powers. The whole time you were going through that, my powers just kept flickering that's on hilarious. and off. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I might be ending this <laughs> just because I leave. But no, that is fair. Like, I think with Fudge, it's going to be hard to find a better guy than him. That's not an import. It's going to be hard if they're going to do that. But kudos to them if they can. I think with Sven, you can find something better I at this agree. point. I think with m anything is probably going to be better at this point for the brand because <laughs> what he typed i'm not going to say what he typed was the worst thing i've ever heard because no, i watch wasn't. like old l9 streamers but that i think uh, i have my opinion it, 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 it was Whatever. it was just so like it's not that what he yeah. said like it got it, caught up quick was it bad yeah and did like people got pissed at me for saying that i could see a world where c9 doesn't play him at worlds it's like that has nothing to do with whether what he said was like bad or not. It's just a matter of whether the C9 brand's okay with it. And that's where I wasn't yeah. I wasn't personally sold. But like he didn't say anything downright horrendous. But you can't say that when you're a Korean player playing in an American league. Yep. That's when that becomes yeah. a problem. Because you're hypocritical of what you're saying. That's fair. That's very fair. I think... I think, obviously, like, what he said is gonna... It got a lot of traction really quick, and people were very upset with it. Do I really care what he said? No. If I read that, I'd probably just chuckle and move on. Yeah. Like, but certain people get really offended about their home country, and we're Americans. We don't get as offended. Because we're a nation of immigrants. So... At least none of us have been, or most of our family members haven't been around here longer than 200 years. So the only reason we're I, kind I, of the only reason I gave that statement some severity was because I went through the mental exercises of what if the roles were flipped? Uh, how, yeah, that's how fair. how big of a deal would that have been, like or reverse? I know Paul's got a phone call, but like just just think think through that. Had it been reversed and somebody said that to MS in similar context, it would have been one of the biggest ordeals in recent years since like the Reggie shit. Like that, like that's the mental exercise that I was going through on it and why I thought there might be action taken on it. But MS apologized. Looks like he's playing worlds. All is fine. So that's pretty much it. And there's really not much else to, to say on that matter. Not much else to continue on. But uh, I'm actually going to end this. Uh, Paul, I'll let Paul come back and say his goodbye. 
Thank you to everybody for tuning in. That was an hour and a half. Thank you to Kevin for coming on, and I'll thank him later. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Hope you all did too. Uh, we're just going to wait for Paul to come back and put his headset on, and then we'll be good. We're going to wait and see what he says. Oh, he, he nearly put it on, but not fully. Oh, it's coming on. All right. Sorry, I got called. No, you're good. I was wrapping everything up anyways. Any final things you want to say before we head out? Hi, Luna. Uh, no, not really. I think, uh, I think it'll all be good. I think Worlds needs to come quicker. This huge break is really killing me. Yep. When is the first game? October. I saw the schedule out October today. October 9th. We got, two and, we got two and a half weeks still. That's a long time. Yep. But whatever. Dogs are bugging me to let them out, so I got to go. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Adios.